Okay, so this is um, my, my Building Doesn't Recycle, uh, Designing for Policy Change. And it's about, um, if anybody doesn't know, it's about an app that uh, I helped make at Hack Night and it actually ended up um, having an influence on a policy change in the city, specifically uh, a recycling law. So first, just for people who don't know, this is My Building Doesn't Recycle. This is um, it's a website that allows uh, people in buildings with five or more units in Chicago to report um, that their landlord or building management isn't providing recycling services. So you can see there are a lot of data points on the map. Okay. So what problem was I trying to solve when um, we made this app. So there is a, basically there has been a law in effect since I think 1993 that says uh, that these buildings with five or more units actually have to provide recycling services. They have to contract with a private hauler. So they're actually supposed to provide recycling services, but the problem was that the law was not enforced. So this, as you can see on the map, this led a lot of building owners to not provide recycling services. Um, and there's really, since the law is not enforced, there's really no way for residents to report this because it's not going to go anywhere. So we made this app. And then uh, one and a half years later, what happened? There's a lot in between, but I'll get to that later. Um, OK, so this is the 22nd of June, and Rahm Emanuel announces that he wants to crack down on high-rise high recycling scoff laws. So this is from the Sun Times, and basically, the, so this was a new ordinance was introduced uh, to City Council. Though so that's that's the date of the introduction, and then we see on July 20th, he they vote to crack the whip on high rises. So basically, that means that the law, um, the new ordinance, was passed. So now in this talk, I'm really going to talk about how did we get there because I skipped a lot of steps, but this was the end result. Okay, so how did that happen? Uh, so I, in this process that I followed um, at Chi Hackney, it was really, it was more of a kind of a, a design process, I would call it. There was, a, it was heavy on, on discovery and definition, not, I'm not a programmer, so I'm not going to talk about that part of the app as much. It's more about, to me, that one of the key parts was really the, the planning and the strategy, which is, I think, sometimes the less glamorous part because you can't exactly see it. So in the first place, I did a ton of research really to kind of to identify the problem. Like it's, it's actually, it's fairly complicated. There's a long history of these, um, these building owners not providing recycling and there was even trouble getting like a basic blue bin program to come to the whole city. And that was fairly recently that that was citywide, but still like um, five unit or more apartment buildings were lagging behind. So I also looked at the ordinance, um, made some partnerships with the Chicago Recycling Coalition just because they, they've been through this with the whole history and I think they helped write the original recycling ordinance that was not enforced. Um, so this is really problem framing and I, to boil everything down, I really figured out that non-enforcement of the law, that was really the main problem. That's why these buildings were not providing recycling services. And I thought any solution should really address enforcement. Um, so I thought about like a concept. I thought, well, what about if this were, like, let's say this law were enforced. Wouldn't, re wouldn't residents have a way to report that they're not receiving the recycling services, just like other 311 reports? So I thought of making like a reporting channel, sort of a virtual reporting that doesn't go anywhere except on the internet for everybody. So I think a really important part is, is storytelling, and is that's kind of key to catch people, to tell a story, don't just kind of put points on a map, but, but give context. So besides mapping the resident reports, which are sort of a story in themselves, um, also collected and displayed resident comments on the site. So you can see not only does this building not recycle, somebody might say, oh, my landlord says I can just use a blue bag, or they don't want to pay for it, or they'll separate it from the trash later. All those sorts of things are kind of misinformation people have. Um, and also just storytelling gives, I think it's important to, to give context. I tell the story in the site, like on the front page, and then also in the about section, and then tell people ways to get involved further. Um, so the strategy was really like to show with all these points on the map to show that residents want recycling. It's sort of if somebody's taking the trouble to log this on the site, they are clearly passionate about recycling and want it. 
also to show that the current policy is not effective. If you can see all these points on the map, then you can, you can tell that whatever you're doing is not working and it's very visible. You can't say, oh, it might be working or just start your own recycling program. That's, that's not working. Um, I also gave options to take further action. So there's a get involved page that, show, that um, has a letter that people can write to their aldermen. So it's sort of funneling them down, report your building, learn more, and then get involved, contact your alderman. So I wanted to make sure it wasn't just drop your point on the map and then go about your business. Um, so definitely having a clear goal, I think, is key. But I think that's something that we underestimate the value of. It's really, if you have that goal of get the city to enforce the law, you can kind of check every feature suggestion, every input against that to say, does that meet the goal? Does that help further it? And if not, let's not put in that feature. So then we move to incubation. This is me, I think, presenting or making an announcement about my building doesn't recycle to hack night. So I want to talk about um, core team members. So of course, that is me with longer hair. Um, there's Ben Wilhelm, who was a developer who worked on it pretty consistently, and then also Alex Kahn, so these were the, who's also a developer. So these were the three people that really uh, contributed the most consistently, although there were a lot of other people who came and went and you know, helped with content, helped a little bit with coding, too. So we very much in the hack night model. Um, one thing that'll happen when you're in a large group of volunteers, or maybe just any large group with people coming in and out and kind of an open entry to groups, is you get a lot of feedback about what you should include or what people think is the right thing to do. Um, some of the feedback I got was like, include yes answers, like yes, my building recycles and I'm going to report it. Um, and I think that for me, I was like, how does, how does that help achieve the goal? Because I think for a policy, people, if, it, if you want it to change, you probably want to show what's not working, but I think some people thought, oh, that's, that's shaming, and shaming never works. Um, also, they said, like, partner with apartment finding apps, to kind of make it more of a market-driven thing, like people will, you know, want to live in apartments with recycling, and then landlords who don't offer it will be like, oh, I should offer that, everyone's moving there. So that was another idea. Um, the third one was collect lots of data, like just get, it, get really granular, ask a lot of questions, but I thought that would dissuade people from you know, just doing the basic thing, which is to enter that your building doesn't recycle. I didn't want to make the barrier to entry too high or ask people questions they didn't know. So build, test, and launch. Um, it's a recycling rocket. And so this is, I think this is something that people here all know how to do, um, especially build. And we did do, I did do some usability testing with people here at Hack9. I think I did test some basic assumptions, like do people understand what this app is? And some people didn't. It used to be called, where is my recycling? And people were like, well, does that help me find my recycling bin? Or, so things like that, I changed the name to make it extremely literal. So after launch, impact. So there, there was a lot of impact. Um, so it got the, right out of the gate, it got, some media coverage. I think uh, the first one was on TechShift, which is on WBEZ, which is a program that no longer exists. But that, and actually, um, I can't think of his name, but I think Chris from WBEZ actually comes to Hack Night. So that's how he found out about it. So it's sort of like an easy in to get your first media coverage. Really after that, it just um, came to us. Like we, the media, it kind of, the app spoke for itself or people heard the coverage and it really just, it. It just happened. I, I was not really that successful when I solicited media coverage. Um, when I tried to send a press release, nothing really happened. Got some really small coverage, but mostly it was just coming to me. Um, so I'm going to fast forward to April of 2015. Um, so there was a Tribune article that came out about my building doesn't recycle. And so this is kind of the first like mainstream, very mainstream media coverage. So after, after that article, the city did ask for our data. They said, just, can you just email it to us? Um, and then I said, well, how about we have a meeting and we talk about you know, my findings or the, you know, just what the data means or what we've learned. And they weren't really, they weren't ready to do it at that time. And they weren't, um, weren't really clear about what they were going to do with the data. I think they were still figuring it out. Um, so that was streets and sanitation. And so we sort of was just left that I'm not going to send the data, and I just sort of moved on. So in the meantime, I wanted to kind of keep the momentum going. So I 
met with, I went with Jen Walling of the um, Illinois Environmental Council to meet with four different aldermen who had very um, high report counts in their wards to try to see if they would be willing to champion a change in the recycling law. Um, no one, I can say honestly, nobody was that responsive. I don't think they necessarily took us seriously just because it wasn't on their radar that it, it, what they didn't have any idea that this was going to be a change and maybe that hadn't come about yet. So mostly people were kind of like, ooh, but what about Hunter Properties? And you know, like sort of not wanting the uh, big building owners to be offended who are also their constituents. Uh, I also kind of kept it uh, on people's minds by doing lots of presentations, mostly things that people asked me to do, just kind of presentations in various places. And that always gets social media attention too. And I think it also shows everybody, like policymakers, journalists, other people that we're keeping up the site. We haven't forgot about it. We didn't give up. Um, okay, so progress. So this was December 2015. We I, uh, got a call from NBC5 Investigates who wanted to do a story on my building doesn't recycle. Um, and so this is sort of, this was a milestone because um, the city actually responded and said, not to me, but to them, like in their, when they were asked for a comment, and they said, hey, we're working on strengthening and rewriting the law. And there was the first time there ever was like a direct response. And I think perhaps it was because NBC5 is kind of major, it's TV, a lot of people watch it. So there was some progress. So May 2016, finally collaboration. So the city uh, emailed me and said, would you be interested in coming in to a meeting at Streets and Sanitation? Here is a summary of a new ordinance that we're writing. And so I did end up coming in and talking with them. They wanted to know about um, like resident comments, like what were people saying about not having recycling and like, you know, what, what are they saying about what their landlords say? So I was able to kind of give them the rundown. I also release the ward count feature where it's like you can see the broken down by wards who has the most reports and so I think that was something that was helpful to them and then finally I gave them the data I was there was really no reason to hold back at this point because we did achieve a collaboration and one that I would consider meaningful I was you know invited into the process so this is um, this is me at uh, city council is kind of the collaboration picture. Um, I, they, the city actually asked me to testify in front of the, um, the Health and Environmental Protection Committee on, on July 18th. It was two days before um, the ordinance was going to go to city council. So they wanted to kind of have people testify in support, um, in support of the new ordinance. They just wanted to tell, ask me about, or me to talk about uh, my building doesn't recycle, what residents were saying, the success of the site. So things move really quickly. Um, on the 22nd of July or of June, the ordinance was introduced, um, and then it went in front of the Health and Environmental Protection Committee. And then on July 20th, the ordinance passed. So this was this ordinance was actually it was introduced by the mayor. That could be why it went so quickly. So about the updated ordinance, um, it takes effect in January 27. It mandates single stream recycling. It's something that um, blue, it's, some, it's what you do in blue bins, basically one, you don't separate. Um, it raises the fines for non-compliance. Uh, they used to be 25 to to $100 per day of violation, and now it's, I think, depending on which violation you're on, it's like uh, 500 to 5,000, so it's a huge increase. Um, they're also, I just found out that uh, Streets and Sanitation, the city is going to create a new 311 request to, so that you can actually report officially that you're not receiving recycling. Getting to impact, how did we get to impact? Um, I would say do your research. Like really, I took it upon myself to become the expert in this area as much as I could. And I think that involves relying on, on community partners, on reading a lot, uh, really just being able to speak, to speak to the issue both on your site and into the media that are both important. And I think also in framing, really framing what problem you want to solve. So I think that choice is crucial. 
Um, engaged community partners is also really important. I made an, an alliance with the, um, with the Chicago Recycling Coalition pretty early on. And I think they've been, they've just been a good resource about the history of the ordinance, how they've, you know, their past interactions with the city. And then they were also brought in to help rewrite the ordinance. And they have like legal people on their team. So that was really helpful because that's, that's not my specialty. Um, I would say define your goals and audiences. That might seem obvious, but really like having a clear goal, like the goal, the goal is like not to make something, but like why, why am I making this? Like I want the ordinance to be enforced and that will kind of, and then you can ask yourself, how do I do that? Um, I think audiences are also important. The site really has a, a couple different audiences. It's residents who report, journalists who can see the story, and then policymakers who can see how their policy is not working. So you can kind of incorporate those all. I think you, you're onto a good thing. Uh, the, also to educate and tell a story I think is really important. Um, if you can get people to understand the issue in a way that's understandable for most people and there, there's a story like, oh, the law isn't enforced and people really want this and why does this happen? What can I do? I think that giving people something to latch on to makes makes your app more shareable and it makes it more palatable to people who might want to cover it. And also I think to policymakers because they see the media coverage. So it's sort of a kind of self-feeding. Clear calls to action I think are important. Um, the call to action for residents is report your building policymakers. It's change your policy. Uh, Journalists, I think it's look at the story, and it was really it's really easy to pick up. So I think you're telling people very clearly what to do. And I mean, as a user experience designer, I always believe you can. I, I think you should lead horses to water. Don't kind of funnel people into what you want them to do. Uh, keep everything simple. I try to keep the site very simple. I know there are people wanted to represent more things on the map. Um, I didn't really want to do that because even adding a yes answer, it's what if you have dueling yes and no answers? How do you represent? How do you represent those? And just, I think it just makes things more complicated when you have, when you don't filter a map down to the essentials. Um, and I think and when you you know message is the same thing. Like it's a very simple message: enforce the law, report your building. Uh, I try to keep the function very simple too. Uh, keep it civil. I, I think um, it, when you want to eventually engage policymakers, I you know you don't want to editorialize. You don't want to say, "Oh, the city's incompetent. What's wrong with you? Like, why isn't this happening?" Like, more just like these are the facts. Like, they are not enforcing the law, so therefore all these buildings are not providing recycling services. There's not really a whole lot more you need to say. And if you want to be brought into the process, it's probably good to keep the editorializing out of it and really just focus on stating facts because those are irrefutable. I mean, that's, it's, it's just true. Look at, look at the people reporting. You can't really say, well, that's, well, I don't know those people. It's, it's really happening. Um, I, I would say wait for collaboration. It's probably, I mean, I think I sort of went back and forth about whether I should give them the data that first time. Uh, but uh, I think I'm glad I waited because I didn't, know what, what they were going to do with it. And if I would have just kind of wanted tossed it over the wall and then been like, success, uh, I, I think that that probably, it may, they, may, it, they may not have invited me again, in again for collaboration. And I really, I like being part of the process. I like being able to email somebody at Streets and Sanitation and ask a question about the, like, what's happening with the ordinance. And I do that. And they, you know, help me with what, you know, details about the ordinance tonight for the presentation. So I think, that relationship is important, and I think you can wait for it. It's kind of a gamble, but um, last but not least, aim high. I think policy change is possible. I mean, I think it depends on what policy you're trying to, you're trying to change. I'm not saying this kind of app will work for every issue. I'm not, I'm not sure it would, but I do think like sometimes people want to solve the easier problem. Like let's, what I think is would be somewhat easier is, you know, let's just, let's collect yes answers, let's integrate with apartment finding apps, we're done. I was like, no, I mean, I think the policy is what, that is what is governing and what makes people um, not provide recycling because they're not getting fined. Like that, that is the problem to solve. It seems impossible, but why not go for it? I, I think it's, 
and you have to be willing to wait. Like you're not going to get immediate gratification. You may actually never get gratification, but if it's something, if it's an issue that you care about, I would encourage you to do it. I think it just, it depends on your goals. And I think policy change, that's a difficult, it can be a difficult goal. So what now? Um, I would say report your building. There's still, we're, I'm collecting the site. We're collecting reports. I continue to send them to streets and sanitation. When we, when we get enough, I send them a new Excel file. So I, I would encourage you to report your building. Eventually there will be the 311 report, but they don't, that's not up and running yet. So you can still report. Educate other people about the new law. Uh, sometimes I go on Reddit and like I'll see it in the Google Analytics and just go in there because people are like, People have linked to my building doesn't recycle and they don't know that there's a new ordinance or they have misinformation and I'll go in there and be like, no, actually this is the way it is and you should still report your building. So if you guys could do that too, I'm not saying you have to do it on Reddit, but somewhere. Uh, also submit an issue if you were on the Open City repository. So if you want to, I think Open City is last recycling. So feel free to submit an issue if you see something that you think could be improved. And that is all. Thank you. Oh. Questions? Um, I, well, I'll just go with front row and I'll come back, Ben. So you said that you, uh, you work with uh, one of the uh, public action groups that have originally been Ordinance. Yeah. What was their response to you pointing out that it wasn't working? Or how do you feel about that? Uh, I think they knew it wasn't working and they were really frustrated. I think it was, you know, they had high hopes for it when it was written. And then it was just, I think this, the city kind of pulled back and just didn't, didn't enforce it. I think they, but they, I think they really hoped that it would be something good. Mm -hmm. Other question? Oh. <laughs> <Let's see. laughs> Um, so I used, I, it was a lot of just like looking at internet articles. So I looked at this article in the Chicago Reader that's like, why, why can't Chicago recycle? And that was a lot to wade through. It was very confusing about why there wasn't recycling. But the one thing I think I came away with is like that, um, there's not enforcement. I think I just identified that problem. And I think I also kind of had, honest, I mean, in my head, I honestly kind of had the idea that like, wouldn't it be cool to have people be able to report this? Because I felt like one of the other problems I didn't talk about that I identified is that the city was kind of saying, no, it's working fine. People start their own recycling programs. Everything's fine. But like showing something that's clearly that like people creating their own data to show that something is is not effective. It's very, I think it's, it's very convincing. Um, yeah. Yes. What was, what was the sort of the impetus to starting this project? Was it like your ability to recycle or? Yeah, <laughs> actually it was. Um, I, so I've lived in Chicago for like, uh, like 13 years now and I've never been in a building that recycles. And I was, I think I just, I think it just started to annoy me so much that I felt like I wanted to do something and I was just so tired of like having to sneak around and put stuff in people's blue bins or put it in the condo next door is recycling. Um, yeah, so I think that was, that was, yeah. And I, I think I was just tired of it and then I was like, I'm gonna do research. I think there could be a way to solve this, but I wanna do more, you know, kind of more research until I decide on how to do it. Oh, yes, I'll get to you, yeah. Uh, I'll go to you. Yeah. Have you actually figured out what the city does for the recycling? What what they get? Because I hear all sorts of things that they oh. don't actually recycle it, they don't do anything with it. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I've, I think that's a common perception. It might be partially true. I mean, if you look on our, um, on my building doesn't recycle, there's a link to a Curious City um, piece that talks about all about like what, what, it, what happens with the recycling that's collected. So that would probably be an answer. But yeah, I think that there's a lot of a perception that there's a lot of things aren't recycled. And then there's the whole thing with like the commodities having really low prices and it not being worth to, worth it to recycle. So, uh, yes. Uh, do you 
think that the you, you said that the penalties have increased substantially with the yeah. new ordinance. Do you think that they're high enough now to convince buildings to, to actually flip over who've been holding out? Uh, I mean, they are extremely high. Um, well, I, I mean, I, like, so you mentioned you know they go up into the thousands of dollars, but I actually have no idea how much how expensive it is to haul recycling out, you know, to, to contract to, to get a contract for recycling services. So like you know, at some point, if that penalty is still too low, yeah, you to just pay the fine. I think if I mean, yeah, I think it's probably going to be at most. It really depends on the size of the building. I think at most it's going to be. I mean, I think like one, I mean, it really depends on the size of the building. I think it'd be a low, as low as, like at the lowest, I think like, like a 90 gallon or something is like $45 per month. Yeah, so I think it is worth it to recycle at this point. Yeah. Uh, I guess follow up to that somewhat. If you're a land, uh, landlord and uh, you want to set up a program, yeah. is it smooth or is it, you know, uh, I think the city is going to try to make it uh, smoother for people is what I understand. I mean, there are a lot of, it's all private haulers, so you have, there's no real transparency or standardization of, of pricing. So that's part of the, that would be part of the issue too, right? Do you have like landlords getting up with you once you do this, saying, hey, I get it, what do I do, and how can I do it quickly? Uh, no one has asked me. I bet they're they're probably asking streets and sanitation. I know that. I mean, the city of Chicago does have stuff on their website about. I don't know if it's up to date or not, but about like who who the private haulers are and the phone numbers. They don't have anything advanced. Like you know, they don't. I don't think they help negotiate or provide any support, but they do have the numbers. Would you be interested in like telling like that that side of it? You know. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if I would be overlapping with the city or not. That's the thing. I think they, I would hope that they would provide that because I, my, my bias is to try to get the city to provide services that I think they should provide or at least oversee them since this is actually private haulers that do this. But I wouldn't, I don't exactly want to do their job for them. Um, um, I'll go over here and I'll come back. Yeah. Yeah, I just checked it out. My building provides Oh. Like okay. And so I'm wondering how to deal with those nuances because I like just looked at my building and it says like no reports, but officially yes, they do provide. Yeah. Um, well, I, but not for like plastics or glass or anything like that. So the new ordinance does specify what has to be recycled. They have, um, I can give you a link to it, but it's, I mean, there are a ton of materials that it lists now that, that have to be recycled. So that's another part that's been modernized because I think the ordinance from the 1990s is like <coughs> paper, glass, and anything else. Like it's very, it's like three things like because it's like 90s recycling, but now I think they've, they're trying to modernize it to in that you, you have to accept all these, these different materials and every, I think every hauler does. But I, I think there are, yeah, there are definitely nuances and I don't know if, I don't think the reporting system will be nuanced enough for that, but I think that is also covered by the law. Um, okay, I will uh, I'll come to you. Uh, you know, no, because I think they're gonna, once they actually start going, once they send the inspectors out to the buildings, I think they are going to verify whether it's there. So I won't, I, I don't think they'll just take it on the reports on the site. Um, I think they will verify it, and then they give they have to give a 30-day warning, so they won't get a fine immediately. And hopefully, somebody can find a hauler in 30 days. Uh, okay. Oh, uh, back there. Oh. Um, yeah, I have a question about I guess the current ordinance and the yeah. new ordinance. Because I've had this conversation with my landlord, and he said, "Oh, yeah, yeah, we definitely recycle. Uh, just put it all in one bag, and they'll recycle it after the dumpster." Oh, yeah. The people, and I mean, yeah. as far as I know, that's valid, but maybe you have more insight, or maybe that doesn't qualify for the current new <laughs> uh, Yeah, I mean, I think that you're supposed to have an actual dumpster that is specified for recycling. I think that that's, um, I think they, I think the ordinance says that that, saying, doing that is no longer valid, is what I'm understanding, that you have to have single stream. Yeah, because I think that's called like post collection separation or something that like supposedly just because there are really there are facilities that do that, but like <laughs> they're gonna get fewer recyclables. Did you? Yeah, I really liked your emphasis on facts. Um, unfortunately, there are a lot of environmental discussions where people disagree about facts. 
Mm. Right. Um, I kind of, I don't know how many, yeah, facts. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, I think before, I mean, the app is not the definitive source of who recycles and who doesn't, because it's, it's self-reported and it's no one's, been, no one's inspected. I mean, I think before the app, maybe, or before it kind of got traction, people were saying, oh, we help, we're happy to help building owners or residents and building owners start their own recycling programs. And it's, it's kind of saying, like, that's, it's up to, it's up to them and it's, it's happening. It's just not, it's just not formal. And I think that that, that wasn't a fact. So that, I would think that would be one, one area where there's sort of a discrepancy, but with people were, you know, surprisingly convinced by the site once it really gained enough reports and, and coverage. Joel. So uh, all of the recycling receptacles in the alley behind my apartment said three uh, were missing as of like two weeks ago. Oh. So do you find that often, the st stolen receptacles? Uh, like stolen blue bins or like yeah, stolen? Yeah, they're gone. Oh, I mean the blue bins, like the, the app doesn't really deal with those because it's like buildings with like five units or more. So they have to have, they would have to contract privately. And I would think it'd be hard to steal those dumpsters because they're like, usually they're not like plastic, they're like steel. But um, I mean, yeah, recycling, stealing, I don't know. Would you like um, it back? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the next step. <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, I'm not sure if that's stipulated in the law. I actually did see a, sort of like a, a building association, like trade kind of site saying like, hey, so this new law mandates recycling, but they don't say that you have to have, basically like you don't have to have enough bins for the recycling. And they're like, just get the lowest, get, just get the smallest thing. And so I don't know if it's, I don't know if they misinterpreted the ordinance, but that is, it's, it's interesting that I saw that. So it's, You'd hope it would be like adequate for the recycling. Anybody else? All the questions are out. <laughs> oh, I have a, I have a oh. question about recycling. Uh, do you have to take the cap off of those? Uh, I think you're supposed to leave them on, actually. Yeah, you don't want to separate the cap. That's what I've heard. Or like, like, just take it off the bottom. No, I think you're supposed to leave it on, actually, yeah. Um, 